and in our top business story, rents and house prices in Abu Dhabi continue to fall as the low price of oil dampens demand in the capital. According to property broker Cavendish Maxwell, apartment rents in Abu Dhabi's five key investment areas all fell by between 0.8 and 2.5 percent in the 12 weeks to the end of September. At El Reef downtown, one of Abu Dhabi's most affordable investment areas, rents experienced some of the biggest declines over the quarter, with average rents down 2.5 percent, while there were similar declines in Aldar's prime Al Raha Beach location. Villa rents also fell rapidly during the quarter, with average rents in Sadiat Beach villas down by 2.7 percent during the quarter and at the Raha Gardens and El Reef 2.3 percent lower. Apartment prices in the capital also fell during the period, although by smaller amounts, with Cavendish Maxwell reporting that apartment prices in Abu Dhabi's more affordable investment locations Al Ghadir and Al Reef downtown falling 0.6 percent during the period, while in Sadiat Beach residences, Raha Beach and Al Reem Island, they were 0.4 percent lower, pushing annual price falls down by between 2.7 percent and 4.3 percent. A global report has recently found that employees working in the UAE have it best when it comes to balancing their personal life and work. The latest UBS Annual Prices and Earnings Study 2015 has found that the average number of hours worked in Dubai reached 42.4 hours per week at a rate of 2,035.2 hours of work per year, which is the best ratio out of 71 global cities, given that the average holiday is up to 30 days per year. According to the Ministry of Labor, Article 65 states that the maximum number of ordinary working hours for adult workers should be 8 hours per day or 48 hours per week. The report also addressed the number of working hours in New Delhi in India, which reached 42.6 hours per week. The city of Mumbai recorded an average of 43.8 hours of work per week, while employees worked an average of 2,276.6 hours per year. Hong Kong topped the list for working the most hours per week at 50.1. In Egypt, residents worked an average of 40.3 hours per week in the capital city of Cairo, which according to the reports was similar to the working hours of Bogota in Colombia. The global report further stated that in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta, people surveyed said they worked an average of 40.3 hours a week, with only 12 holidays per year. The Middle East Retail Forum 2016 kicked off in Dubai yesterday, bringing together retailers as well as representatives from the public sector to share values and vision to boost retail growth in the region. According to experts at the forum, the UAE retail sector is facing a tough time as margins are under pressure, driven by lower oil prices, decline in Russian and Chinese tourists, and fall in consumer disposable income. A.T. Kearney's Global Retail Development Index 2016 revealed that the UAE and Saudi Arabia are placed 7th and 8th, respectively. The $7,159 sales per capita in the UAE is the highest in the region, but annual retail sales growth slowed from 8% in 2014 to 6% in 2015. Another report by Ventures Middle East, a research firm, expects retail sales figures to grow at 7% per annum until 2018 to reach $285 billion across Gulf Cooperation or Cooperation Council. Additionally, the two-day event, which is organized by the Dubai-based Images Multimedia, invited experts from various retail backgrounds to speak at interactive sessions and discuss the latest ideas, approaches and issues facing the retail market in the region. One of the main highlights at this year's edition of MRF was a focus on the challenges facing new age businesses. Entitled Young Turks Redefining Retail, the session included young entrepreneurs who are creating and running brands differently in a highly competitive landscape. The speakers shared their experiences and knowledge about starting a new business and the challenges they face to bring their ideas into reality.
I used to be the guy, the corporate guy working in Media City every day and at lunchtime we would all turn to each other saying, guys, what, what should we eat today? You go to the same sandwich shop, the same supermarket and I thought, wouldn't it be great? My mom's rotis and the things that we eat at home, we can make that uh, something that's a food option here in Dubai. Um, I decided to leave my job. After 12 years in the corporate, I thought, you know what? No, I want to do this. I want to I want to chase that dream. Um, and little did I realize how tough it is out there. It's a big, tough, tough world out there when you start your own business. Yeah, I was going from bouncing from one office to another. And I think six months pounding the pavement, knocking on the ad, uh, HQ, uh, uh, on their uh, purchase manager's door, saying please give me that space and eventually they relented eventually they gave me a chance and it just everything started from there but i wrote uh, all this experience that i learned fresh i i, I wrote a blog about it uh, if you go to the motiroti website motiroti.me there is a there is a section called blog uh, four chapters on there how, how to start how to get the trade license how to, what, what do you look for in the location uh, i needed to share it I, I wanted to i wanted people to understand what what the pain what the reality is like it's the street night started it was it's a street culture festival in dubai the largest now in, in the region and we won numerous prizes for that uh, but it wasn't always like that i mean four years ago when we started this the idea of even having street artists right there in the street was something very weird for a lot of uh, uh, people here in, in, the, in the region, especially for the authorities. We started literally going from door to door in, 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 in Alcos to see, visit the warehouse managers so that sometimes didn't even speak English and beg them for to use some of their wood pallets because I would use those wood pallets as a stage and as a, as a, as a stand, as a wall, and now you see wood pallets everywhere in Dubai and it's a cool thing. But four years ago I really did this because we had no money. Four years ago I was having a lot of visitors coming from Canada and Europe here to visit me and all they could think about Dubai was the malls, right? And I said, and, and they will keep telling me that there's nothing to do in Dubai, there's nothing real in Dubai. And I got really fed up with this comment. So if at Dubai as a community, need, we need to have a, a homegrown industry of local food trucks, so we need to create a platform that would allow them to survive. This is why Truckers DXB came to be. And our slogan that I love, and uh, we use them from street nights to Truckers DXB, is hashtag get out the mall. So we're trying to get people to do something a bit different. State-owned Abu Dhabi Airport's company will invest in redeveloping the international airport at Mahi in Seychelles as the Indian Ocean country expands its aviation and tourism sectors. Officials from Abu Dhabi Airports on Tuesday stated that the aim to, is to help deliver an update, updated passenger terminal operating to the highest international standards. Seychelles signed an agreement for the redevelopment with Abu Dhabi Airports and further talks will decide specifics of the project. According to Joel Morgan, the Seychelles Minister of Foreign Affairs and Transport. Abu Dhabi has a number of investments in the Seychelles. With its carrier, it had Airways owning a 40% stake in Air Seychelles. While the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development and Abu Dhabi's Masdar have invested in renewable energy projects in the country.